Alright, so in this video I'm going to connect Microsoft's um, Microsoft SQL Server database to Excel. Um, so attaching a and it's going to be from one computer to another. This works like across the internet or anything. The point is just connecting a database server directly to an application. And so we're going to do Microsoft SQL Server to Excel. I'm going to go through um, some troubleshooting step by step, like up to um, so like the simple stuff first, making sure that you have a connection, making sure that you have all the rights, and then like going through step by step um, troubleshooting to making sure that it works. So I'm going to demonstrate this over a virtual machine and a normal window. So here's my Windows 8 virtual machine. Here's my host machines um, stuff. So we're going to make sure um, that there's a connection between them. Okay, so Windows 8 side IP address is this. Okay, so we're going to be accessing from the host machine the um, the database on the Windows 8 machine and so we just need to make sure that the host machine is connected so as you can see it is and so that's all fine and dandy so now we're going to want to have a couple things up first we're going to want to go through um, and of course have Excel up <laughs> yeah. 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 Um Okay, so now the point is is that at the end we want to be able to say from server and connect it to something outside our computer, in this case a VM, but this will work over the internet too. I was doing it today. Um so yeah, let's let's get into it. <laughs> so so on the host computer, I'll just be able to click here and then put my information into there and get access to it. And so on the host side, we're, we're pretty much done until later. So now we're just going to go into the virtual machine. And in the VM, we're going to have to have an instance of SQL Server built, right? And so I'm just going to assume that you already have SQL Server and over here I'm going to get into the SQL Server Management Studio I'm using SQL Server 2012 okay so now we're in the SQL Server Manager and over here in databases we have our my database IS test that I set up. All it is is it's a confusing name. Um, there, whatever. Um, connection test, and so I have a couple of these little databases that are filled with bogus data that I found somewhere online. And so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is go through all the permissions that we need to make sure are working on here and so you should right click on this go to properties and this is for your entire instance and so it's not for like just a database or something it's for the entire instance you gotta go to properties go to connections and make sure that this is um, clicked it, it needs to be obviously you need to allow um, I'm sorry uh, you need to allow um, remote connections so you say okay and so that's kind of step one and then the next thing is you need to be able to uh, where is it 
and you go to security and within security uh, you have all these different users that you can have right and so we're gonna I'm gonna create a user right now that I'm going to use in this example so let's say uh, it's Jim I'm gonna be Jim for the moment and you have to use SQL Server authentication that way you can actually get um, it because you obviously can't use Windows authentication if you're trying to get access to a different computer so you have to come up with a password so write a password and this is also important too you want to unclick user must change password at next login because if you do do that then you have to log you have to reconnect to your database and log in again before you can use it and so obviously that gives you a problem if you just want to create the user and instantly go log in on Excel or whatever you want to be using and so remove that for convenience um, so and you also want to give the user system admin privileges if you want them to be able to <coughs> do stuff with it and that's it for this one yeah and so I also set this to connection test just so that um, just because that's the default that I want to access and so now you'll notice over here Jim is right there so Jim has all the access he could ever want to the database and so now the next step is we need to go make sure that you can actually get in um, to <coughs> it um, you need to set up the browser for SQL Server and so you go to SQL Server uh, management console and now within this console you're gonna have a few things that you need to do um, you'll notice right here that the instance of my server is listed here and we're gonna be focusing on this one and on this one okay so this is the instance of our server and we need to do some configuring with that and we, this is the server browser and we need to do uh, we need to activate it basically and so there's also a SQL Server network configuration that we need to deal with. So here's the process. We gotta go to protocols, we gotta go to TCP, and, we're gonna, and make sure it's enabled. Okay, so if it's not enabled, click enable. Then we're gonna go properties, and then we're gonna go down to the bottom. And you don't have to go all the way to the bottom, but it's just fast. Make sure that TCP port is set right sometimes TCP dynamic ports is set and it's got some other number right here if that's true then you want to set a TCP port and so 1433 is kind of like the standard one but if you have multiple instances of um, of SQL Server then it, it will set either a different TCP port or it'll give it a dynamic port and so if it ha does have a dynamic port just give it either 1433 or 1434 um, so that you can connect it it doesn't really matter what the port is um, like incredibly uh, you just have to be able to type it in later alright so you want to make sure those things are good and then you want to go to SQL Server Services and by the way if, um, if this wasn't enabled and you just enabled it then you're going to want to go over here and go to your SQL Server and restart it. But mine was, so it doesn't matter. And so now, if you look over here, this thing by default is going to be red. It's going to be stopped. So you want to start this so that you can access um, your server. And so you go to properties, and you're going to have to go over here. Go to start mode, and it's going to be set. To disabled set it to automatic after you set it to automatic you're going to click start here okay so that actually boots up your server and then you're going to and also on service you're going to when you click on automatic you're going to click apply and then log in then start okay and so once you got those two things good this thing's running this thing's running they're both restarted just go back here click on TCP and then just make sure is it still the same as what you thought it was before 
In this case it is. So we say OK and it's good. And so everything in our SQL Server configuration manager should now be good. The last thing you want to deal with is you want to go to firewall. Server firewall. And you want to just turn it off. Just, just because there could be an issue. And so just temporarily turn it off. See if you can get a connection and then turn it on later and turn bits and pieces of it on and off. And um, a suggestion would be um, if you want to turn on and off specific ports, is just go, of course, open up port 1433. <clears throat> so, so that's pretty much it. And the next step is just going to be um, trying to open it up in Excel. So, Let's bring up our Excel file. So here it is. I'm going to save from other sources. Sorry. Save from SQL Server. And so you're going to have to type. This is one of the, the hardest parts for me to figure out <laughs> because you never really know what to type in a URL because it's just like a static typing. So this computer right here is called oh, come on. okay it's called this is the name of the computer smoosh 911 win 8 okay that's the name and so that's what you need to type in first smoosh 911 win 8 okay so whatever you guys have this is my VM again right um, whatever you have right here for your computer name that's what you put in there and if you're trying to access it from somewhere else on the internet you put the server's IP address there and you probably also just put the domain right there and it'll work and then you want to do a forward slash not a backslash and then you want to type in the name of the instance of SQL Server and so my name if you would recall, oh, this right here. My name right here is Microsoft SQL Server, right? Which is just like the default. So I'm gonna say MS SQL Server, right? And then after that, so now you have the you have this specific computer, you have the specific instance of SQL Server, and that's how it knows. Okay, so if this was a server, then it would know to go to your specific instance because it's on that server and it's that database okay and you also have to say that port I don't, I don't really know why you necessarily have to say the port number and the database because technically they have to be like you can't have two servers that have the same instance name or the same Maybe you can't. I don't know, but they can't be the same port. So, anyways, the point is computer, specific computer, whether that's a server or whether that's computer on the local area, which this one is, um, server name, port. And then, of course, we had to make those credentials, right? So, I'm going to log in as my gym user. You'll remember over here I created gym. Okay. And. Type in the password I wrote for it and say next, and then bam. We have access to all kinds of books, customers, and whatnot. Um, so it's good, it works. And over here you'll see databases, connection tests, books, customers, not lying, those are those are that's a real deal. And if you want to see what it looks like for me to do a connection to something else. This is my this is my home server. Go figure. Okay, I, I set it up a lot of the same way. And this is a different state. Okay, and boom. 
I have the same database on there, but that's just because I copied the same script. So there you go. That's how you connect to it locally um, and over the internet and everything. So I think I covered everything that I intended to cover. What else could go wrong with this? It took me like all day to figure out, and only took me 15 minutes to go through. So it's kind of like it's really important stuff, though. So hope you enjoyed it.